I go in there, it's the road manager, it's Jay Skis. I'm there with YNX716, I'm there with a kill Ali. I'm in the green room, Jay Skis is sitting there. I'm like, hey, watch this, watch this dumbass nigga. Me, I'm the dumb nigga, watch this. I go in this motherfucker, Jay Skis in there. I'm like, yo, hey, what's up, Jay Skis? What's going on? He's like, um, he's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm like, yeah, like this is the first thing I say. Yeah. We supposed to do the interview, but we, something happened. We got mixed signals. I'm trying, we try, I was trying to schedule. I'm like, let's do the this this Jay Skis. What's your name? First there was the Beastie Boys. And then Eminem. And now, although he's not a rapper, we found the drippiest white boy in the game, Waxin22. Check this out. Or Whack Gang, Whack Army, whatever you want to be called. Look at my drip today. My drip is unreal. See, look, let me do my little walk. Sheesh. That's unreal. Oh my goodness. Gee Willikers. This is so rad and maybe even epic sauce. You know what I mean, dude? Really? Look at my hand. I gotta watch on my finger. Yeah, it's the new wave. Paid about $600 million for it. Because if you don't know already, I'm rich. I have like seven different houses, four different cars, and like nine different wives. And it's all the different types of money. Dollar bills, euros, yen, the other ones. You know what I'm saying? I forget their names. They're a little bit needy. But yeah, what y'all know about that? Oh, wait. You don't know anything about that, though. <laughs> Okay, so this guy waxed at 22, right? Um, I came across this guy by mistake. In my opinion, definitely, definitely the drippiest dude in the game right now. I mean, you see the swag. You see what I just showed y'all. And here's why we talking about, we talked about him for two reasons today real quick, right? Number one, he came out with a video where he said, Hey guys. It has been brought to my attention recently that through DMs that some people think in my fit checks and the way that I talk and stuff, I'm making fun of black people or black culture. And I want to let you guys know that, that is not my intent and that's not what I want to do. And that's not what I'm trying to do at all. And I'm sorry for those who are offended and people that I might have hurt by doing that. That's not my intention. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm just being goofy, being like, oh, look at my drill. <laughs> Yeah, I came from the mud or whatever, just being, just joking. But for those who are offended, I'm sorry. And I want to let you guys know that I would do nothing to try to hurt you people or offend you guys. I'm just trying to make people laugh, and that's all I've ever tried to do. So thank you for hearing me out. I would like to hear your guys' input on what you guys think about it. Because if you guys really don't like it, then I won't do it anymore. I, I won't do it anymore. I'll find something else to make to entertain you people. So thank you for hearing me out. I'm sorry for those who I offended. Thank you. And so he apologizes because apparently some brothers got inside this man's DMs and said, yo, I think you're making fun of black people or I think that's racist. Now, I said on his page, because this is me, everybody can have their own opinion. That's what we here for. But I said, I feel like you're paying homage. I feel like somewhere deep inside him, he wants to be as fly as us. He wants to be as fly as us. And this is his way of like halfway showing homage, but I don't think he talking down on the black people when he doing this. This one goes out to all the haters. Um, I literally have a bad bitch and hella money. So what can y'all really say about me? Oh no, he's taking on a women. That's the only gripe you guys have. Because I made it from the freaking trenches. Made it out the mud. Now everyone want to mess with me. But that just ain't going to fly home, dog. <laughs> Based on what y'all saw, what do you think? French, did you show up late today? Yeah. Um, I didn't see anything racist. He's just like a goofy white boy. Right. Right. Man. And he's, he's kind of like imitating what he thinks hip hop is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not that he's trying to be racist or put us down in any kind of way. It's, a, it's apparent that he admires what we do in this business and he wants to be a part of it. 
So mm-hmm. he took his take on it, on what he thinks is hip hop, to try to be down with us. I don't think he's trying to be a racist against us. I think he's just <clears throat> doing what he thinks would be acceptable to for him to be accepted. Right. Right. So I don't. I don't got no problem with the kid. Beans. I have to agree with French. I think um, he might be trying a little too hard. But what are you going to do when you look like a garbage pail kid? I mean, we're not going to do this to my man Waxon. His wax son, right? Wax, wax son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, and the other thing is because I want to interview him. I want to interview this guy. Choice in names, though. Oh, boy. Terrible. Because you wax right. son. Wax son. <laughs> hey. Listen, this is Wax self-deprecating, son. it's self-deprecating humor. He putting the joke on himself. That's my whole point. Right? And so does for he me, know that? that's the thing, because I don't know. Like, I'm genuinely asking, does he know that? Because it seems like he's really trying. So no, he I'm gonna be honest with you. I hate to like pull the mask off of the Times Square Elmo. Know what I mean, I hate to do that, but I'm just going because you asked the question and I, I feel like I need to be honest. It's a role that he is playing. Yes. He don't believe the shit that he's saying. He don't believe it. It's an act. OK, just like Martin did Dragonfly Jones. It's an act, you know what I mean, or when he did Roscoe, it's an act. I agree. And so uh, math of the illustrious cloth? Listen, failed attempt at being fly, and I honestly feel like it, it is an act. I'm almost positive he don't go through his every day, day to day, talking and acting like that. And that is such a small percentage of fly. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to people that do act similar to that and put on gaudy shit or horrible outfits, like that's not, like I wouldn't even call that black. It's way over the top. I feel like he truly, truly is doing it for laughs more so than anything. Most of the outfits are absolutely horrible. It looked like he thrifted more than anything. That's bullshit. This guy's drip is crazy. Man, he ain't putting that shit on. Listen, you seen that shirt? He ain't played nothing with it. <laughs> the dude, he got he got one where he be rocking like the uh, the nineteen eighty nine Adidas like starter type joint. You know what I mean? Like. What the Run DMC tracksuit? Not the tracksuit, just the it ain't big that one though. It ain't besides windbreaker not. joint. Hey, look, look. I, I look I was, and the I other thing. So confused because I just watched the same video you just showed us, and I didn't see much drip at all. So I have a friend, and we be talking about this all the time. I'm playing along with him. Like, I don't really think this nigga's drippy, but I support what he does. I saw so when he say Hola. You can't just get on here and blast. Yo, this nigga, the he got the most dripping game right now. What the fuck are you talking about, Mike? <laughs> right. I'm saying hey, it. Yo, it did seem like Mike got offensive. <laughs> get him. I'm like, saying I, it. I, I, I was so confused because I didn't see no drip. I didn't see no fresh. I didn't see no fly. I just saw a goofy white boy. Ooh, in terms of white boys that could maybe get invited to the, the to the cookout, that's fly. Give me your name. Not that, not that white boy. I just, I'm, is there any white guy that can, get, that can get invited to the cookout that's fly? Let's say John B. Why French make this face? John B. invited to the cookout? John B. has been relevant in 20 years. The fuck He's still invited to the cookout. He's still invited hey, bro, to the listen, You know what? <clears throat> Stop and we. This one thing we gotta fucking stop doing is stop inviting everybody to the cookout. Why are we inviting John B to the cookout? If we don't know John B, he ain't coming to the cookout. We don't give a fuck what color his girlfriend is. We don't give a fuck if he know how to rap or if he heard some rap songs and he know the lyrics. That's where the fuck we go wrong. We always inviting a motherfucker to the cookout. Huh? Listen, I'm putting a kibosh on the inviting motherfuckers to the cookout. No, they can't come to the cookout. We're going to be at the cookout with other people that we know. But Jane from accounting, just because she knew the words to a nothing but a G thing, can't come to the fucking cookout. We don't know that bitch. We know she, she working accounting. She gonna, bring, she gonna bring potato salad with raisins in it. Now, with raisins that. in it. Fuck that. <laughs> raisins and carrots and carrots. 
Get the fuck? Get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. It ain't coming to the cookout. Stop inviting everybody to the goddamn cookout. Listen, I'm glad you said that because there's going to be people in the comment section that agree with that take that you gave. And I intend to push back. Our culture, oh, yeah. our culture has always been more welcoming. It's the thing that makes us different than these motherfuckers that tend to hate us, right? Because we don't exhibit it, it that. It truly is, Mike. We Listen, I feel like when they want to um, demonize us, they use all of the other shit. But truly, we are very, very welcoming. Very, very welcoming. So fucking welcoming that usually at some point, the motherfuckers that we welcome take over the shit that we welcome them to. You invite them to too many motherfucking cookouts, it's always going to be raisins in the potato salad. It's always going to be pumpkin pie instead of sweet potato pie. It's always going to be green bean casserole instead of dressing or uh, stuffing. Listen, because let me take dressing. this. Listen, the people that we invite to the cookout know enough. And if they don't know enough not to bring raisin infested potato salad. Nah, nah, bro. Because what you got to understand, a lot of times. No, wait a minute. The infiltration factor. The reason <laughs> the reason we always get taken taken over or some shit, because we invite them to the cookout. Oh, they cool, they cool, they cool. The next thing you know, oh shit, this ain't our this ain't our cookout no more. Hey, look, hey, hey, everybody done got the itis. Now this bitch in the kitchen making her rendition of macaroni and cheese. My turn. You know what I'm saying? Hey, something. Let me tell you something. This is ridiculous. And I'm going to tell you why. It's something to what y'all are saying. But when you bring that one person to the cookout, they're going to realize in short order that they're a guest. And they and then whoever is bringing them, you know what they bring in, you talk about they, they, they bring in raisin infested uh, potato salad. The person that's bringing them, it's up to them to check to see what's on hand, right? And if they see something weird, they're going to listen. No, you can't do that. And I'm going to tell you why. Right. And then when they get around, they understand. But some of these people that get invited to the cookout, it ain't nothing new to them. Listen, and I understand sometimes you bring people in and they mess around and they sting you and they fuck everything up. Right. But we not going to let raisin infested potato salad take over the cookout no more than we going to let Post Malone take over hip hop. We not going to do it. We not doing that. And and. John B. Yes, is invited to the cookout, and it ain't because he got a black girlfriend. It's because he did a song with Pac. It's because this 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 is my metric. I see what you're doing. You in our lane over here. I see you look like that. We weary of the Elvis virus. That's that's you know what I mean. That happens a lot. We don't want to do that. So we keep our, our eye on you. And I watch you and I hear you for a very long time. And he ain't never came out of pocket. He ain't never came sideways. He never had one of them slip ups. He true to the culture. That man, John B, is on tour right now. Right now, right? Going to these little small ass casinos and racetracks and county fairs. And who you think showing up to watch him? Black yeah. women. Black women to sort of to watch John B. Michael McDonald, you invited to the cookout. Flat out. Mm, you know what? All right, Mike, you might have one near. Michael McDonald might be the one. Mike, Mike, we listen, we gotta, we gotta go to the back by the fence and, and talk for you. <laughs> Michael McDonald is invited to the cookout. A couple of your cousins didn't even get invitations because the way they act. Hey, ain't that crazy? That's the truth, though. <laughs> but Mike is well. Look, that's Michael McDonald with the whole salt and pepper beard and everything. I keep forgetting, nigga, you in. You in. You did a song with Patty LaBelle and went blow for blow with Patty. <laughs> Patty stamped well, it. I'm done. I'm done. Patty stamped Michael. George Michael, too. Invited to the cookout. Rest in peace, George no, Michael. No, 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 no. Listen, I love George Michael's music. But we ain't inviting George Michael. He a, he, no, he, we not. He a black music no, lover. fuck that. Culture. So what? We, he, listen, 
Now we right back at the fence again. Yo, listen, man. George Michael in the front yard, leaving, leaning on Uncle Regal. Man. Listen. Mav, he don't want to go listen. Mav, he don't want to go listen to Pat Boone. He want to be at the cookout that's playing Frankie Beverly. That's where he want to be. Why would we? Why would we go? He listen, listen. Hey, Mav. When he go in the house to use the bathroom, though, somebody got to stand outside the door because we ain't dealing with no bullshit. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, you forgot. Mav, Mav, he driving down the street. He smell that good barbecue. He hear that music. Locks over. He see people dancing, having a good time. Aunties and uncles and shit, niggas in straw hats, two piece linen. Know what I mean, taffy colored shit. Know what I mean, he's. I want to be there, nigga. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I don't think that guy is gonna be the one to be like, uh, hey, what's going on, my 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 n word. Like, nah, he ain't about to do that. He know the rule. Well, I, no, not at all. Not and so at listen, all. in terms of when it comes to waxing, he's showing how some parts of him respects the black culture, but he also is making fun of how hard we lean on our own swag. Listen, because we know how to lay it on fucking thick. We know how to lay it on thick. And so that's what he's making fun of. Perfect example, and I ain't trying to hate on nobody. Deion Sanders, go... Go Colorado, Buffaloes. Indeed. But his son, all, all he know how to do is this now. Like, we'll lean the fuck into some swag. Every time they get in front of a camera, he's doing this. He ain't really beat nobody. Like, don't get me wrong, BTCU, 19th ranked team, when they was unranked, you know what I mean? Lost the games they were supposed to lose, won some games they weren't supposed to win, props to Coach Prime, but y'all ain't really done nothing. Every time his son get in front of camera, huh, he leaning on swag. Right? So this is what Waxon is doing. This is what Waxon is doing. He's just showing you how not only is black people naturally cool, we'll ship the cool into six fucking gear. And he's a representation of that. He's showing that back to you. And I think this shit is funny. He makes people happy. He makes people laugh. And one thing that he does that a racist won't do is to make a sincere video offering up an apology to any black person that he might have offended because they came to his DMs and he felt a way about it. So he came on, he came on camera quick. Not like these politicians do, that the whole world knows. They do something really bad on fucking Twitter. They double down on it. It take them six weeks to do something right about it. And it's only when they about to either lose votes or a committee assignment, or if you in Hollywood, you gonna try to save your fucking career. Cause you just said something when you was drunk or heated. Now you're trying to take it back when the heat then came down on you. This man, when they came to his DM and said, yo, I think this ain't right. He got his own face and went to his real voice, real white boy voice. Mm. And came on in his, in his, as his self. And said, listen, it's coming to my attention. Some people think this is yeah. If anybody, I, first of all, I don't mean this to be offensive, but if anybody thinks that it is, I apologize and I will not do this shit no more. A racist won't do that. No, in fact, though, they're gonna turn it up a notch because they know they got you. And they all the black people, people, all the black, it's some it's some over 40 black folks in this man's comment section. Wes Craven from Barbershop Talk Podcast is in this man's comment section. These black folks are like, man, keep going. Because niggas really wake up to click on this man's videos to make them feel happy. He provides a service. And I don't find nothing disrespectful about it. I want to interview Waxing so bad on this show. The only thing I'm worried about is that my drip ain't up to par. Right? So, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about to fucking go on. That, Listen, I'm about to I'm about to go through Timu, and I'm gonna see if Timu got. I'm gonna try to get seven shirts from Timu for eleven dollars. Listen, first of all, you got 11? Fubu on deck. Your drip is up to pa, son. Birdman goes at Joe Button. That's the headline I got on my screen. Oh, Birdman goes at Joe Button. So, so let, 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 let's let's do the history on this, on this joint real quick. So why? Why? I'll tell you why. Okay. Drake comes up. Does it always have to come back to Drake? Yeah. Six degrees of Drake is what the shit should be called at this point. Because everything somehow either comes back to Drake or Jay fucking Prince. 
I shouldn't even say Jay fucking Prince. He might take offense. Listen. So Bird, man. So Drake comes out with an album. Drake comes out with an album. What's it called? It's called For All the Dogs. I haven't heard it, but some mm-hmm. people heard it. And they had some criticism about the Drake album. And I guess Joe Budden said he's rapping for the children. He rapping for the children. And that's my, yo, dog, I had to look up how old this nigga was when I finished listening to the album. Mm -hmm. You are 36. Your birthday is in 20 days. I Googled that too. You (laughs) only 37 years old. Get the fuck away from some of these younger niggas. And stop fucking these 25-year-olds. And then... Drake said, you have failed at music. You left it behind to do what you are doing in this clip because this is what actually pays your bills. For any artist watching this, just remember you are watching a failure give their opinion on his idea of a recipe of success. A critic gave you their opinion on how to achieve longevity. You switch careers because the things that pop into your brain had you broke living check to check and the raps you write had 450 men showing up to your shows in Dusty and Nietzsche jeans to screw up their face to move music 29 and pretend you are the GOAT. I don't know who wrote that for him, but that was good. <laughs> That's a good clap. That's yes, a good clap. It was. That was Drake. That was <laughs> Did he say <laughs> that say it right in Nietzsche? Did that, that, that they pronounce it? Yeah. Listen. So, so nice. So yes, he NYC. hit him with C or NYC. I used to say it like that too. NYC and I, Believe it or not, I truly think that is what it is. But we've just got so accustomed to saying what we like. It when I look better. at it, it looks like somebody was going for NYC. When I look at how it's spelled, yeah. it looked like that's what it was going for. But then people, because you, that, but- this is going back to waxing. And black people and how we lean on our swag. For us, it's not enough to be NYC. We got to make it fancy in Nietzsche. Okay. Yes. Now that's it. Sound that's French right there. Them, them jeans was made in Paris, France. Birdman gets involved, right? So now Birdman comes out, and Charlemagne has said some shit too. And then Birdman said something to Charlemagne that was kind. Of, he just said respect Drake is what Birdman said to Charlemagne because them two recently got on the phone and made up, right? After all this time. But Birdman says to Joe, calm down, brother. You're not built for this real gangster shit. Now I'm opening up. Now it's my turn. Are we saying now? Birdman is saying, you not calm down. You're not ready for this gangster shit. Did y'all forget what I just fucking read? The only thing I read to you was what Joe said about this man's music. So when you do music, you put it out when you do art, period. Spoken word poetry, paint some shit, right? Write some lyrics, make a beat, play guitar. You're up for judgment. That's the whole shit. That's the whole fucking shit of it. And everybody don't got to like your fucking shit. And when you're on top of the fucking mountain, you better come correct. Because if you don't, somebody going to have something to fucking say about it. Now. Rolling Stone could have fucking said the same shit. Drake probably wouldn't have said shit. Right. But now, Birdman, you continue flying in for the fucking rescue. Did the Bloods blow down on fucking Drake? Did the Mexican Mafia blow down on Drake? Why does he need a gangster to jump out and type online? A pseudo fucking threat. You're getting in between Joe Budden and Drake. Drake can't handle Joe Budden. Listen, fuck, fuck what your name is. I don't want to disrespect nobody, but fuck what your name is. If you got to jump out and defend Drake over somebody criticizing his music and you want to do it publicly, y'all look weird right now, all of y'all. Listen, and threaten me on fucking line, and then do something, and I'm suing you. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a buck. Because if you can't take a nigga talking about your music, and you worth, I don't know, 200, 400 million, and you send somebody to do something to me, I got a mortgage to pay. Listen, and I'm going to make you fucking stand on it and look like a motherfucking idiot. Why are y'all typing? 
Why did you I understand little kids doing drill rap? They stupid. Their mama was on crack. They crack babies, right? But this nigga is supposed to be a boss. It's a couple of niggas I got problems with. Might pop up. You just never fucking know. But let me say this. What I'm not going to do is type anything about that on the internet. Nothing about it. You one of the biggest stars on the fucking planet. One of the most famous people in the fucking world. You type in cryptic threats to Joe Budden because Joe Budden said he didn't like Drake's music. If you want to beat up people that don't like Drake's music, you gonna need a whole ass army. Yeah. Oh, you gonna need a whole. You gonna be fighting every day, all day. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Joe Budden ain't the only one. Look, Drake thirty seven. We forgot, didn't we? Cause he do rap for the kids. <laughs> this, this, this nigga showed up with the shit. In the Champagne poppy, champagne poppy, and I'm not gonna be able to keep a b- if this nigga showed the fuck up inside the same room. Like, and y'all goofy ass chicks, y'all goofy ass chicks. This is what you go for. This nigga, the nigga you wit's not tough enough. Why? Because he didn't shoot up the plays, or he ain't getting a nigga face and say nigga what? He not tough enough. But let Aubrey show up, you gonna suck him off with a head full of barrettes. So Birdman feels the need to jump in for Drake. And now are we not allowed to criticize your music? Hello, underground rappers. Let's talk. Let's talk. Because a lot of y'all niggas just want to rap. A lot of y'all just want to rap. A lot of you niggas want participation trophies. And I support what you do. And I support your dream. But it's you annoying fucks that have the nerve to get offended when somebody not raising you up to the level of fucking hove for that mid ass shit you fucking did. You mad at me. You mad at me because I didn't fucking crown you. Like you haven't heard what's going on. You want to skip right over Cormega. Fuck. Nah. Like, yeah, you want to look at all these niggas and say, uh, Benny and uh, this, uh, the cloth and Edo and no, no, no. You skipping right over Cormega. Who the fuck are you? What have you made? Because if I play you 20, I'll play you 20 tracks right now. And then if you got one that's better than that, I'll put you on my fucking live show. I bet you that'll shut a lot of niggas up. Now we can't criticize. Now we can't look at underground fucking niggas. Underground niggas can't even battle each other. We can't even have a nigga go, you know what? You suck, and I'm better than you as a rapper. Because now niggas want to fight and shoot. When the shit is supposed to be competition. Yeah. Listen, Kumo D, LL Cool J went at it tough. You couldn't tell me they didn't hate each other. Nobody got shot. That sounded like a fart. So it's like earlier, it's Mav's phone vibrating because, yo, yeah. I don't want to talk about what happened off camera, but the yeah. timing was amazing. LL, de- LL destroyed cannabis. That's Nobody exactly died. what happened. A notification just popped up on my screen. Listen. <laughs> oh, my. What the fuck? I almost <laughs> wish you were recording. And this, and if anybody... You want to do something really bad physically to anybody when they come to the music front. Ja Rule should want to put hands and feet on 50. He should want him dead. Because he destroyed Ja's career. Not only did he do, not only did he ruin Ja's career, but he did it by criticizing his style of music and then stealing his style of music. and rode off into the sunset into the offices of the boardroom of vitamin water. (laughs) That was his final destination. (laughs) 
from from slaying Jaru straight to the office of the vitamin water. Next thing you know, he owned the whole Stars Network. This nigga got shows. Meanwhile, Jai doing a fire festival. This close to doing fed time. That close to doing fed time. <laughs> it's feeding people bologna sandwiches, bro. In the middle of a hurricane. Talk to him, man. Man, talk to him. Talk to him, man. <laughs> Uh, bro, I'm I'm honestly at a at a loss. I'm at well, let's a, go. A, what about what about Birdman basically threatening Joe Budden for saying he don't like Drake music? Listen, you guys was putting me on to an artist, and I had heard about him, and I said, mm, I don't listen to his shit, but I do look at his page. I look at his page because I like the way he's marketed. I like this. I like that. But I would be lying to you if I said I listen to his music. You know what I'm saying? I love. Everything visually, but not necessarily musically. And that's that's cool. He don't give a fuck. He doing what he's doing. He's doing his thing. There's shit that I like about him, but I just don't like the sound of the music. And I feel like that's okay. That motherfucker don't even know me. He ain't tripping. We're not going to say who that is. You know why we're not going to say who that is? Because these because niggas are goddamn like sensitive. Because these niggas sensitive. Numbers. I promise you he wasn't going to send a cryptic message about wanting to hurt me because... Hey, you said numbers? Numbers. That's who we talk about? Don't hit my phone if you ain't trying to talk numbers? That's what you talk about? Nah, hmm? I thought he was talking about Larry June. I was but, talking about Larry June. I just gave you a Larry June reference. That's a Larry oh, June lyric. Oh, you were. You did. I'm sorry. I got slow and, for a second. And look, and I, I certainly didn't catch it. Because hey, you're not a fan like that. But I'm Absolutely. a big Larry June fan. So he got a song Absolutely called not. Numbers. That's what I thought you was not doing. A, not a fan of the music, but again, I like what he does. Otherwise. Oh, that Don't boy got check it. me, bitch. And that's check cool. the air quality. Check the fucking air quality. Ooh, listen. Listen, French. Come on, man. Harlem. Larry June is, so we're not even going to come to me about that. Well, congratulations on missing the whole fucking point because we still talking about Birdman trying to diss Drake. I mean, Joe Budden. Well, listen, here's the thing. <clears throat> I'm even surprised hip hop has forgiven Birdman for kissing on fucking Lil Wayne. Like, come on. Like, did we forget that quick? So now, oh, you ain't ready for this gangster shit. That shit is valid now? No, watch this. Watch this. Because probably nobody will fucking see this. But watch this. <laughs> listen. He would get mad that you even mentioned that he kissed Wayne on the mouth. Listen, that shit is everywhere. I didn't but invent that shit. The he fuck? did it on television. Come on, like, how are you mad at anybody for some shit you did in public, on tape, on record? <clears throat> Nigga, you mad at me? Fuck out of here. How come Joe don't go there? Maybe he's afraid. Who knows? How many threats is baby gonna issue without doing shit? And I don't want to see nobody get hurt. How many times this nigga gonna fake pump fake on the nigga? Is we finished or is we through? <laughs> <laughs> Came all the way down there. One of the people he was trying to intimidate was a woman. And Charlemagne. From a <laughs> one and a half. <laughs> one and a half woman, women in a in a dude who had nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> Listen, you got to give it to Lennar by the way he handled that, though. Lennar did handle that pretty well. You know what I mean? He didn't really Listen, flinch Some of the much. goonies that he came in there with kind of looked like they didn't even know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> like, yo, we, we came in here for this shit? <laughs> All right, I guess. I hey, we know who paying the bills. You better Max. get in pocket. You better get in pocket. Yeah. And... and I do really got that in my notes from a dude that kissed Wayne on the mouth. And from a dude that had nothing to say when Rick Ross went at him. Mm. So so let's say something happened to Joe. Birdman is a suspect. Actually, yeah. Because he ain't ready for this gangster shit. Dudes are too old to be doing what they're doing on social media. This won't be the last time I talk about somebody being too old to do some fuck shit on social media. Because um, it happens all the time. I don't understand, like, you know... Sometimes you're going to put something on social media and then you're going to be like, you're going to look at it later, maybe three days, you're going to, ugh. And then you just learn. Like me, and I know French is probably learning this too. 
70 percent of shit i want to fucking put out on a post don't ever make it to a post facts oh hell yeah i concur because it, it just don't i'm just like wow well, are extra fucking sensitive yeah I'm like why would I I'm not I'm not I'm not putting this out today. It might be a little joke that I told myself and I think it's funny, but I was drinking some Hennessy. It might be two o'clock in the morning. I might be like, and then I'll be like, uh, I'm gonna hit cancel because I feel like I'm gonna wake up in the morning sober and be like, uh, that was corny. That was a corny ass joke you just told. And that's why you didn't get no likes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get no likes. And that's and you, you and, and no you just likes. showed these people how corny you really are. And yo, so we we cultivate our images online. So we try to make sure we stay as as much in pocket as we can, right? To a degree. Listen, I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this. Every once in a while, I go through my own fucking Instagram feed and just get rid of shit. Like, you know what? That was an emotional response to something. Get rid of that. That was an anger post. Get rid of that. All right, that's just not really funny. Get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? Just keep my shit in order. I'm a music producer at the end of the day. My fucking posts should be 90% music related. And I nice. try to make sure that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I try not, I try to stay away from how I feel a lot of times, unless I feel something about music. Right. Usually if it's positive is what I will, I'll be like, yo, this artist, this song, this album made me feel like this. And I think maybe y'all should go listen to it. That That's about as close I get to my feelings. Um, unless somebody do something egregious against my people, or something else, then I might say something about that real quick. But if I get pissed at somebody, I feel like somebody slighted me. I'm not about to. I'm not about to go online with it because what these niggas ain't about to save me because they've read it. Oh yeah, this nigga for like it is what it is. But anybody heard the Drake album or any songs from it? Yeah. And does anybody feel the need after this conversation to go listen to this album? Yo, I didn't feel the need prior to the conversation. <laughs> I could, I can honestly say that in the summertime, um, I was moving around, and one of the things that I heard often was the search and rescue. I think that's what it's called. It was obviously a single or something of his or whatever, but I heard it so many times. That was like one joint that I actually liked, but it ain't it. It ain't really about nothing. But I definitely didn't have any um any need to hear this new Drake's album. I seen a video where, where his son had drew the picture and I ain't even like that. I like the fact that he showed his boy some love, but. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you definitely spoke on grown men and their gangster shit, but like grown men fighting each other's battles. But Drake actually got under a post and swore on somebody else's deceased mother that they were gonna come up missing from Birdman, not himself. He himself did not say you about to come up missing. He said, Stun about to have you gone on what oh man. I, I, rest in peace. I, I forget Birdman's mom's name, but Gladys is Birdman's mom, because he did like wow. a a song uh for her when she passed and stuff like that. So, you know, they be swearing on Gladys, but this grown ass man, Drake. <laughs> got on somebody's post and said, stun about to have you gone on Gladys. So not only are grown men fighting each other's battles, but you're going and saying somebody else gonna have you gone and swearing on their mama, like. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike Powers? The, 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 the 